Hello everyone and welcome back to, uh, to us talking about Teppin. I forgot that I was supposed to say, are you ready for another fucking adventure? But it doesn't matter because we're here to talk about Teppin. We're not even really on an adventure, we're just talking about Teppin. What, what are you talking about? Hanging out, with, hanging out with friends is an adventure in and of itself. <laughs> okay, fine. Fair. Yes, I win the day on this one. So anyway, we waited so long that now all three card previews are out, so we're going to talk about all of them. We were going to do this originally Monday, and then someone told Kaze told me, like, literally, hey, today's the last day it's going to drop. And I was like, god damn it, I'm not about to. It literally was like, by the way, the preview is tomorrow. Yeah, and also, it looks like these are not the final cards. It looks like the next update is on the 30th, and that's when we will get a trip, or 29th, depending on whatever time zone you live in. Um, so, so that, that's trailer two, I believe. Is yeah, that correct. That is correct. I think that's that's the, we're not going to see any more cards, and then they're just going to drop the rest. Because some nice. people are wondering how big this card set is going to be, and I'm going to say it's going to be a little bit bigger than what we currently got. But I the core pack, I, I could see that. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's start. Well, actually, yeah, we'll we'll get into it. All right, let's start. We'll start with card preview two, and then we'll move on to three. Uh, the first card we got here is Nash. He is a epic. I like that his tribe is human. I forgot that there's a whole tribe system that has not been re- really used yet. Um, Doesn't really matter at all. It's just like not, not color yet. lore. Not yet, cards. Anyway. Uh, anyway, he's a 1-5. Well, sure. He's a 1-5 cost 4, and his effects are a combo. And when played, if, you explore, if your explore count is 3 or higher, he gets plus 2, plus 4. And the current explore count is at 0. So if if, had, if you've been exploring a whole bunch, he turns into a three a three nine with combo, which is actually kind of disgusting. That's yeah, pretty crazy, and he's only four mana, so you can run him in uh, wrath, yes. wrathless. Yeah, definitely. So uh, this is obviously very good once you've got your explore on. I will say that um, using explore now, and obviously this is not how it's going to be in the final game. Uh, if you don't draw any explore cards, this card is basically dead in your hand. Because you don't want to play it until you actually get your combo meter up, but you can't. If you don't draw any combo cards, then you get the unfortunate thing of having to waste them early. But I, uh, we'll see. We'll see how big of an issue that becomes when actually explore comes out and there's more explore cards to deal with. I'm only talking about my when experience. it's a real mechanic, yeah. as opposed to a Jill gimmick. Yeah. Let me tell you, when I was using Jill and I had three Claires in my hand and zero explore cards, I was a very sad boy. Yes. It was uh, it was very bad, but yeah, I think you, solid, oh. like you said, can be run in Rathlos, which is already annoying. That's what that's what we got for Nash. So I just want to say I love that like every Street Fighter character has combo. <laughs> oh yeah, it's really funny. Also that funny to me. that Nash and Gael both have it. For a second there, I thought they were only giving combo to charge characters, <laughs> but I think Chun Li is not technically a charge character. Talking about Heavenly Kicks, yeah, uh, she's agility. The in combo, that's her That's her skill duo. Yeah, I just mean that, um, like, the mechanic of being... Cause oh, Gael's... the Street Fighter charge yeah. characters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Chun is a charge character, yeah. Okay, so every single charge character so far has gotten combo then, because Nash has it, Guile has it. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Chun is 100% a charge character. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll believe you on this one. You're the more the fighting <laughs> game expert on this one. <laughs> Uh, next we got is Claire Redfield, and she is a uh, four drop two seven epic. And when you, her effects are every time you explore, you gain one M- MP. Um, it's pretty good in my opinion. Um, it's like an alternative version of Mana Ramp, where basically all your explore cards cost one less mana. That might as be might, that might as well be what this ability is. Yeah, and specifically, or also if you're running Jill, you play Claire and then you immediately use your effect that counts as an explore, so you get one MP back immediately. So it's really just the three costs at that point. Uh, very interesting. I actually th- a lot. I think some people were kind of like, eh. I saw some people going like, eh, that's a very, like, cute thing, but I think depending on what kind of explore cards we get, like, this effect could be insanely good. <laughs> Especially yeah, since I agree. some people get explore through victory, so if you play her right before they win a victory, they get to explore, and then you can, like, there's a bunch of things you can do to gain MP back, and especially in this yeah, and game. And if you do it that way, you're basically reducing Claire's uh, mana cost by one, too, because you're refunding a little bit of the mana that she spent. Exactly. It's similar to... I the... think this card is pretty versatile, in my opinion. Um, yeah. 
Uh, I would still probably, in my mind, run uh, probably two of them, depending on what kind of deck I'm running, in my mind. If I was going to be trying to go, like, for a crazy MP best. It's not the same as Zombie, where Zombie is an automatic, like, three cost, he dies, and then I get one MP back immediately. Yeah, it's not quite the same as that. And it's not quite mana ramp either, like yeah. the kitties and Iris. Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. I, I think it's... I think my only worry is that it might end up being, like, a win more situation. Mm. Where, like, do you really have four mana to just flop down on the board? But I think she's a good lane play against, like, any sort of low uh, attack, whatever you want to call it, unit, minion, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that definitely. someone's just putting on the board for passive effect because then she's not really at danger because she's seven. Um. Yes, yes, I, I see what you're talking. You know what about. I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, let's go on to the next card here. We got Carlos again, Carlos Oliveira. I, I'm going to say it's Oliveira. It's a rare cost four, and he's a three five. And when he's when he's played, he gets to explore a shield. And then we have shield right here. Let me go to the bottom. I don't know what shield could possibly do, but let's see. It's a one cost give shield to a friendly unit. <laughs> it's basically you just explore the game. Yeah, you just explore a shield, and believe it or not, like uh, he it's very basic, but shield's also very good. Like in general, having shields in your hand, it's very nice to have. The only problem, yeah, is, shields are good. Yeah, the only problem is that it takes up an ex pocket, so you can't like use it to the way I want to use shield, which is when they try and kill me with like a like with red when they try and target me, then I use shield. Like it's a little bit different with explorer, so mm. you can't always keep it in your hand because otherwise you're just. You need to ex clog your ex pocket up. Exactly. Uh, still, I think pretty solid, and he's just a he's just a rare. So that shows you what they think about him as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> solid. <laughs> yeah. Next, I think he's pretty good. Yeah. Next, we have outnumbered. It's we're now into the green ones. It's a rare three cost. Give a friendly unit three HP, and if you have a friendly, if you have a three friendly units, also give plus two plus two. Uh, I think green has recently, uh, for this specific set, has been getting a lot of cards that are about um, flooding the board. But also because mm -hmm. green is the only uh, deck that floods the board. Yeah, I'm about black, kind of, depending yeah, on which black, one you play. Yeah. Black, but black floods the board because they have a bunch of one cost <laughs> in their hand. Oh well, yeah, hey, it still counts. Um, yeah, it still does. You know who's going to be interesting with this is uh, Felicia. Yeah, that suddenly turns Felicia w way more deadly. Or in a uh, a green and black hybrid deck, there's a green and black X that's been going around lately, and uh, spreading infection right into this gives you a zombie that's like what a four or five. Yeah, actually, yeah. Oh, it'd be a four or five plus three more, so it'd be a four or eight. Definitely very. It's it's a uh, it's very hard to deal with at that point. I don't. I don't know how often you'll see it because it's it's kind of expensive for a combo card that needs a full board. Yes, it's something where you're already, like you said previously, you're already winning at this point if you have a full board. The only one I can think of like that completely floods the board is if you're using a revenge deck who suddenly got all the revenge cards because the black is the only deck in the entire game who will go from having one monster to three in the span of two seconds. Yep. That's what they're best at. I, I think it's a good card. This is like a lot of cards that I feel like I'm to be going, oh my god, X really sucks. Let's help him. Because I feel like this is a card that screams charge shot X. Yes, it does. That Specifically with um, X, this is going to be very good. So we'll see how this goes on. Definitely more interested in trying out X with some buffs. And with buffs, I mean uh, deck cards that are better. I definitely want X to be a little bit better, but I think it's it's not bad. Yeah, not bad for sure. Uh, let's go on to the next card. We got uh, Kulu Yaku, everyone's favorite Monster Hunter that they like to farm in World when I was playing. Yep. The quick farm, yep. Yep, he is a rare, he is a 2-5, and when he is played, you get to explore for agility. And agility does, it's a one cost, give plus one, plus one, and agility. So that's actually that's a good explorer, in my opinion. Yeah, that's like, a... a really good explorer. Giving agility to I don't think people 
depending on how high up you are, is that agility is so good it can literally win you the game. Because if you play it when your opponent has nothing to play against you, they ba- you basically get free reign over them. Also, he is when well, he's four mana, right? Yeah, he's four mana. Four mana. He can be played in Rathalos. He can be played. Oh, and giving Rathalos agility. There's no card currently in Rathalos deck that gives agility, right? Not as a buff. He runs Heavenly Kicks Chun, but that's it. Yeah, so definitely worth something. Definitely. Agility is just so good. Like, agility is so shitty to deal with. This agility also... is like, it, it doesn't, I don't want to say underrated, but it doesn't get as much respect as stuff like uh, Revenge, but it's really, really good. Yeah, uh, I've lost countless games to agility for sure. That's what puts the fear of God in, into me. Yeah. Uh, let's go into the next one. We got the next green card is Shona, and he is a common uh, cost 3 to 5, and when played, he explores for Herculean Strength. And Herculean Strength is... Where are you? Right here. It's a 2 cost, uh, gives 3 HP and victory plus 1 plus 1 to a friendly unit. This is another card that I think kind of screams X as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. I, I don't know how good this one's going to be. This is one where I'm kind of like, eh. <laughs> I don't know about a, this it's one. It's a common drop. The one thing I'll say about Herculean Strength is that victory with X is insane because the plus one plus one turns into plus two plus two. True. With charge shot, like there's definitely that's the reason a lot of the times that um, if I'm ever losing to an X player is because they were able to play Chris and then I ignored the fact that he gives victory to everyone. Every single unit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely something he's a common. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and we'll see uh, if he sees any use in the future. Now, this one, uh, Jury, the Purple Spider. This We're now in purple. Uh, legendary, cost 5, a 2, 8, attack 2, and a HP 8. And then after dealing damage to an enemy hero, explore for the Feng Shui Engine. And the Feng Shui Engine is a 2-cost purple. That is, give a friendly unit, plus 1, plus 4, agility, combo, and spillover. Yes, uh, Feng Shui Engine is absolutely ridiculous and purple is a really good color for jury to such a high like they have all the hook shots and all the halts and everything it's, it's hard to kill her yes if there is one um if there I mean, is absolutely she has the same stats as jester yeah and oh uh, less cost too because jester is like an eight isn't he is a seven okay uh obviously she does something different and she's a legendary you can only have one of her but you she exp- she you get one damage in at all and she has already uh served her purpose because that one card in the hands of purple is so fucking hard to deal with uh-huh. and also um with jury specifically her being five um makes her just it makes wesker have to think about whether or not he needs to use obliterate which is a shame because you don't you only have three of those in the deck and uh, you want to always save those for when Ibuki shows up. But if, if Ibuki's not showing up, then Jury's just going to kill you. Yep. Because this is an explorer as well, so she gets a Feng Shui engine every time she hits you. Yeah, that's that's constant. That's constant pressure coming in. And the last thing you also want to give Purple is more ability cards. And also, she can drop Feng Shui in if she wants to. Yeah, it's... This but card's one in... Feng Shui on her would give her 12 life. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people were afraid of what uh, Black was coming in from this set, and I am terrified of Purple now. Like... Yeah, I, I think her being a legendary is so bad. Yeah, yeah. Because either she makes a really big impact or you neutralize her immediately and she makes zero impact because you can't draw another one. Yes. That's the... Uh... <laughs> God, she's really good. Yeah, she is very good. That's why she's, she's really good. It's why you have cards like um, what's his face? I'm kind. Of, I'm trying to think of him right now. Um, it's bit like Raflos, the legendary Raflos. Like, obviously, he's not going to be seen play every single time. But if you get if you get him on the board, he can completely switch the entire dynamic of the board. Like, it's that's Absolutely. what legendaries are best at. Is that it's they're either they help you. 100% stomp the game or they help you completely take back control because they're too uh, good to actually ignore. So you never want to ignore them. Unless it's actually, you know, that's not even true. I was going to say, unless it's uh, Ancient Artifact X, 
who is not particularly good, but he's still decent. I'm going to say some cards coming up that we'll talk about later might make him way better. Okay. But that, that can be applied to a lot of legendaries, I'll say. So that's Jury. Let's go on to the next one. This is Lupo, which, uh, again, this is from Operation Raccoon City. <laughs> I still can't believe that they made it into the game. Um, We're really pushing this whole um, four mana, like, thing that they're making. Yeah, yeah they that, really that... want people to use it. They're trying, and uh, we'll see if it turns into anything, but we'll, they seem like, if anything, a very silly deck to at least use. And yeah, this is, like, also the first thing where it seems like it's an entirely new playstyle going into a deck. Yeah. Like, on its face. There might be other ones that I, you know, I'm just not thinking. This is the first one where I'm like, this is completely different from how Purple used to play, and, you know, it's not gonna... It's not going to fit in normal purple, so you're going to have to build completely around them. It's it's a whole thing. It yeah, looks yeah. good, though. I, yeah. I'm interested to try it. Definitely. So she is a 4 cost, obviously. Attack 1, HP 4. And when played, she gets plus 2, plus 4 if there's a purple unit in your hand or EX pocket with an MP cost of 4. So she's the one that you want to play first, and you have to make she's sure you have... She's the leadoff. Yeah, she's the leadoff for everything. The thing that I find interesting is that it says, and the EX pocket. Or the EX pocket. That means that there might be an ability to get you, let you have a four cost in your EX pocket or something for purple. Because I know there is a. But purple also has foresight, so. Oh, that's right. Purple also has foresight. You're right. Okay. So there are ways to get them on the EX pocket. Because uh, I was about to say, I thought the only ones that could do it was black and green. Because green has a card similar to foresight that's more cost, but it has the cost of whatever unit you're pulling. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Green uh, also has uh, Dreams of Absolution or whatever the hell. Dreams of Restoration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that as well. Back to the EX pocket. Yeah. So I forgot about that one. But all right. Lupo. Again, seems very interesting. I'm willing to get you give this playstyle a uh, a chance when it drops. Yeah, but, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. And let's go on to the next one. This is a, another purple cost with the probably one of the best arts in the entire game. It is a the splendid best art in the game. 100% a, the best art in the game. A splendid buffet. It deals X damage, uh, cost 2, deals X plus 2 damage to an enemy unit where X is the number of cards in both players' EX pocket. Your hero gains life equal to the damage dealt. Um, so even right right off the bat at 2 costs, it's basically that other 2 cost that is a basic card. <laughs> Right. At its weakest, when there's nothing in the EX pockets, it's the same as the Soul Drain or whatever, Morgan's uh, yeah. basic card. Yes. And at its strongest... Ooh, damage it can... for... So it can go up to six. Yeah. And with more cards based around being in the EX pocket, this can definitely get up there in terms of damage. Uh, yeah, because so... it explores the whole new mechanic. Mm-hmm. So I think it's it's a pretty do- decent card, a uh, pretty solid card, I should say. And the art is, of course, the first ever of a crossover where it is Devil May Cry and his Dark Soccers because it is Morgan, Dante, and who is – is that – who you would know. Who's the it's third Nero. character? Is that's it, Nero. That's Nero? Okay. Um, Dante's looking straight into Morgan's chest, which is oh, really – right at it. <laughs> Just directly at it. And Nero is looking away in a way that is extremely funny to me. <laughs> He's just like... He looks, like, uncomfortable. He looks extremely uncomfortable, and Morgan is enjoying, I'm going to assume, both sides, because Morgan is a succubus, so she's, like, all for whatever's going on. Yeah, Morgan's always down. Whatever, Whatever's going on. Yeah. I really hope that this, this card, you know how they do the special art where it's, like, fully animated? I hope this is one of the cards. Oh, uh, me too. <laughs> Like, I don't think it will be because it's an epic, but it might be. Yeah, if it there's a small chance, if it if it happens, it would be very good. But because uh, I would love to see this in full animation, and of course, I also want to see more cards like this where it's actual crossovers between um, the other Capcom franchises. Because I think it's hilarious. It's also funny because it's the two purple decks. Yeah, the two purple heroes. Yeah. So if they want to keep it color based, and then you could have Wesker hanging out with Nergagante in the background. <laughs> Oh, Wesker riding Nergagante. That sounds like the most badass card in general. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely Splendid Buffet seems great. Art is hilarious. Will you be on the other side, like, riding Rathalos to fight him, like, in a joust? Oh, that sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> that would actually sound, that sounds like the next expansion, like, uh, Wesker on a, on a Nergagate versus Ryu on a, on a Raffalos. <laughs> X is writing pretty good. X is writing a Jaggy <laughs> just because Green has so many Jaggies. <laughs> uh, I would love it. Get to it, uh, Capcom. All right, now we get into the uh, to the black cards of expansion two. We have Faded Conclusion. It is a five cost rare. Destroy an enemy with an MP cost of three or less. And if you explored at least one card in the entire game, it goes. You can be six costs or less instead. And yeah, it uh, kind of goes into like what the fuck territory <laughs> because that's really good. That is very good. Um, this is a this is a this is a this is an insane card because it literally already replaces the other five in the game that just says destroy one of, randomly destroy one of your uh, one of yours and then destroy an enemies. If you have just one explore card, if you're running any explorer in black, then there's no reason not to run this. And uh, it, it's just a cheaper obliterate at that point. The only downside is that you have to draw the explorer first. Yes. And you should be able to do it depending if you're running the deck. Uh, we haven't seen... The funny thing is that... Uh, so this is why I think based on what they've currently shown, this card is not as good because the only explore card that they've shown for black is Vega. And he has a five cost. Oof. Yeah, so we'll see what kind of explore cards Black gets because currently I'm not, and the other one is of course the guy who dies, and then you get uh, corrosion. But those are the two, and if those are your two, then I think you want to run the corrosion one. But I need to see more explore from what Black does before I'm like fully like running. But this. this is also a five cost, so it is possible to run in a mixed deck. Yes, yeah, that's also possible for sure. And uh, the one problem that I would say that going into this set that I had is that uh, Obliterate is the only thing that's actually going to be worthwhile. And also there's too many cards to use Obliterate on now. <laughs> because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obliterate is like... It's doing its, it's doing its best, man. It's yeah. trying so hard and there's only so much you can do. I already run three Obliterate, and I have to use every single one of them depending on who I'm playing. It is frustrating sometimes. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see what uh, what other Explore cards are out there for Black, but this is definitely insanely good, especially at Rare. This is a Rare cost. If this is a Rare Destruction card for Black, I kind of i am afraid to see what's uh, not the, the Rare for um, a Destruction yeah, they, card. They really need to start spreading some Destruction. <laughs> and stop giving like yeah uh it's kind of weird unf- that unit destruction is a black specific mechanic <laughs> i'm not sure i'm a fan of that yeah no i could definitely see i want to see some destruction in other players heart, uh, or at least some way to combat uh destruction if there was a way to shield from destruction there isn't <laughs> which is funny um which is why i like running black because it it stops all shields uh you can't shield from death that's obvious uh so we'll see We'll see what's next. And then we'll see the this is the next card. It is a three cost. It is an action card. It is an epic. And it is called Rebirth. And it gives a random unit in your gra- graveyard minus one, minus one, and places it onto the field. Um, so the one good thing I'll say about this card is that I think it lets you um, revenge again. So you can bring back one of your zombies to revenge. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, and then they go back straight into the but deck. But it's a random unit, so... Yeah, it's random. So you can't control because in tap in there's no way for you to stop the game and be like choose a card. No. Yeah. So they just make a lot of it random. So the other problem is that black has a lot of problems uh keeping units in graveyards <laughs> because yeah. they're all revenge. So uh the only the other good thing about this is you can combo with the one drop and then you could get um uh Devilo immediately if you have rebirth and then he can die because oh right away yeah. yeah so there is definitely uses for it um you have to hope that devilo is the only unit in your graveyard for an extremely long period of time so uh we'll see we'll see how this goes uh i'm definitely interested to try it out but i don't think it's the right now it's not screaming to me anything i agree also I agree. if you get tyrant then tyrant just automatically dies and <laughs> destroys all one drops because Tyrant is a 4-1. Oh, yeah. So he or, comes would back. it just come out and die? Or would it just not pick Tyrant, I wonder? I think it would just come back and immediately die and destroy all one cost on the field. That's like the one thing it does. 
Uh, next card, good. yeah, interesting for sure. Next card we got from Black is Vega. He is a, a rare, uh, five cost, two eight, and when played, you explore for cruelty. And let me see, cruelty is a two cost, and it gives a friendly unit plus two plus two. If there's an enemy with uh, only, but only if there is an enemy with four HP or fewer on the field. So you already have to be kind of close to dying to make any use of cruelty. Sort of. I mean, 4 HP is not, not super unreasonable, depending on the deck that you're playing against, but yeah. I, it's enough where, like, you just might not, you know? Yeah. I think it's interesting because with Vega specifically, you want to play him, I assume, against a card, so he drops them specifically down to 4 HP, and then you use it on Vega himself. But at that, that cost, you're, uh, you're doing a 7, it's a 7 uh, drop for a... Uh, Oh, you know, for a four, for a four, for a four ten, that's not bad for a seven. But yeah, but when Vega's attacking the enemy, he's losing health too. Yeah. So you're not going to hit that that peak no. value. You're never going to hit that peak value. I think it's interesting. He's an explore card for. He's one of the very few. He, I think he's the only black card that specifically explores with no like. You have to die first, so you have to win first. Oh yeah, no specific like. Yeah. So condition. It might. It, I would be very sad if Vega was the only, uh, <laughs> like, uh, plain explore card for Black. But I would also understand because uh, a lot of the other explore cards for Black are kind of insane. But they come with the cost of having to run kind of bad units, so it makes sense. Or yeah. units that are very hard to actually pull off getting their explore. Uh, and that is all for Volume 2. That is the last one. Um, before we get into Volume 3, who do you feel? Obviously, I think we're both going. The strongest card in this specific preview is Jury. Oh, God, yeah. It's absolutely Jury. It's uh, Jury, Jury 100%. Picks for Nash and uh, Kuluyaku. Yeah, yeah. Those, I would say I, I would agree with that, too. I think those are the other two where it's like very interesting uh, cards. But Jury just runs this shit right away. <laughs> Yeah, jury is ridiculous in a big way, for sure. Mm -hmm. And next, we'll go into volume three, as we've got our boy Dmitry Maximov. He is a uh, MP cost five. His rarity is epic. He is a one five. Uh, his effects are is that he has rush, and when he's played, he gains one attack for each time you used Explorer. And every time he wins, he gets two HP. Every time he gets a victory, he gets two HP. Uh, so right away... He's five cost, so he can be run with Raphalos. And Raphalos uses, I think, uh, currently in its current build, I want to say Raphalos uses almost every single explore card but Jill. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm not 100 percent sure on what the current build even is for Raphalos. To it's, be honest, uh, but, there's, uh, it's, it's the three soldier guys. I know that much. So right there, uses, yeah, he uses Mikhail for sure. Yeah. So that's. That's three already. So assuming that, that means you get plus three. And so he is now a four or five with Rush. And then when you combine it with what um, Raphlos is best at, you give him his ability, you give him fly, and he autom automatically gets like... He becomes like a very low-cost Devolo for um, for specifically Raphlos. So I don't know. There's definitely some merits to it. This is another card where I'm like, this is another card where it's like, I don't know if I would run any more than just one. Because if you get multiple in your hand and you don't have any explorers, then he's kind of a dead card at 1-5. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I don't know how I, I think he's good. Yeah. It's another card was like, we I need mean, to see some more. Good. We need to see yeah. some more. Uh, but, you know. There's us out there that are going to have something crazy. Yes. Uh, next card for red is... Teostra, the Infernal Infernal King, he is a legendary, he's a 7 cost, he's a 3-7, he has agility, and when he uh, gets a victory, he explores for Supernova, and Supernova is maybe one of the, sh the funniest cards in a while, because it is a 4 cost, deal 8 damage to every unit except for Testro, Infernal King. Testro, yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty good, he's ex expensive and he's not that strong for his no for his value he's only a three but he's got seven so he need at least a few things probably mm -hmm. depending on where you play him and then he basically gets a board wipe he gets an extreme board wipe the only one that can stop this board wipe is chun li if she has a give a shield to everyone or morgan i'm gonna pay half my life to stop this yeah pretty much well no because it's only a four cost 
So she doesn't have to use the one that she could use a different one. Hmm. But um Oh, but at that point it's not stopping it. Yeah, just there's like, like four different hmm. either either way, it's hard to deal with. And uh It's yeah. a good card, and it, if you can't deal with it, I don't see pretty much depending on what you have. Yeah. And then also if you use this with the um the Ryu who gives plus two, plus two to everything in his hand. Uh, that you're dealing 10 damage to everything, and at that point, it's just silly. <laughs> you're just doing... Oh, yeah, the the Dungeon Ranky Ryu. Yeah, that would be pretty ridiculous. It'd be silly. Uh, interesting, for sure. We'll see if he gets any Yeah, I don't know cards. how good he's going to be, but I, he'll be, be fun, for yeah. sure, for some silly decks. Uh, I could see him running in the um, uh, that Rathalos deck that, give, that has that ability to give the shield. So you give him a little tiny buff, and then he gets a shield... So even if someone oh, yeah gets... the one that gives like shield, hmm, or whatever the one the the ability that gives like plus one plus one and the shield the one shield. I think it's plus one plus two and a shield. Tiny buff and a shield. Yeah, tiny buff from like, and it's like, really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would be interesting. We'll see how this goes. This is another one where we have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh, but if you can get them off, it'd be hilarious. Uh, next card is Lightning Bolt. It is a two cost uh, red and fully going full circle. Where I think it's now this is the closest this game has ever gone to Magic because this is literally a Magic card that is two cost called Lightning Bolt. <laughs> that is All also right. red. Uh, the effects are slightly different. No, I take that back. It deals two damage, which is exactly what the Magic card does. <laughs> the part that it doesn't do is put one card from your deck with the same name into the EX pocket. So here's something that I don't understand. Is Lightning Bolt saying the card you hit is the card you no, get? No, it's, it's another copy of Lightning Bolt. Okay, so you basically get to use um, Lightning Bolt over and over and over again for uh, three turns. So for up to six. Hmm. Right, that is, because it's only if it was to a player, I think this would be busted. Yes, but it would it's be. an enemy unit, all, all, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I think at this point it probably could have actually cost one, but who knows? Maybe they didn't want it to cost one because then at that point it'd be too easy to just abuse, but then it'd be too good. But I think at two costs, it kind of goes like you have to wait a pretty, you have to either hope that they're using something so that you can counter with lightning bolts. So you get it for free, but I wouldn't just use. Yeah, I think that's like the main a- a- appeal of it. At least to me is that like, if you're using it on counter and you get to always have it available again on counter. Hmm. So then the enemy has to think, think like action card if i have a unit that could get killed by this because at this point it's not worth it and i'm just gonna lose so i think that's the big thing for for me is always having a re- mm. but i don't think it's like super great or anything yeah it's okay it's a common I, we'll see if it sees anything more but it's i kind of the only thing i see it for as you said is as a counter and as a counter i think it's pretty good unless you draw multiple lightning bolts in which case you're just kind of fucked if you start your hand with three lightning bolts and lightning bolt doesn't really Oh, yeah, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> uh, next card is for green, and it is a D-A? D-A? Is that how you say his name? D-A? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll go with D-A. Uh, he is a f- uh, epic cost, MP5, a 3-5, and when exploring, he gets plus one, plus two. Uh, so... Hmm. This is another card where I'm kind of like, I need to see... It's kind of like Ibuki, and it's, except for instead of ability, you just explore, and then he immediately gets plus one, plus two. The only difference is that I don't know if... Green does not have the same options as Purple has in terms of just like... um. Actually, you know what? Now with ability, with agility, there might, there might actually be a case where you could get this guy extremely pumped up. The only problem is keeping him alive then. Yeah, which, I mean, if there's any color that's going to be good at that, it's going to be green. That so, you never know. Yeah, you never know. I think you could def- I could definitely see a... This is one of those cards that has potential. I think he would have had more potential if he was any other color. Yeah, but that's true yeah. for every green card. That's not it's fair. True. It's <laughs> you know? true. If we don't start giving green some card, good cards of its own, then it's never going to be able to have <laughs> its own yeah, time. We're going to have to start giving green a little bit of leeway here because, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Uh, and next we got is loyalty to the cause, or is it loyal to the cause? Oh, yeah, just loyal to the cause. Is a red card action, and its effect is give seven HP to a friendly unit. And if you have three friendly units, this card returns to the EX pocket, and it is a uh, rare, as I said. 
Uh, this is another card, like as we said before, that <clears throat> is 100% focused on you having a full board. It is also cost four. And but the cost four part with the full board is kind of putting me off. a lot of mana. <laughs> it is a lot of mana. And it's also, uh, it's unfortunate that maybe if it was two cost and it was three HP, maybe it would be a little bit more, uh... Uh, maybe at that point it'd be just kind of too good because then you could play two costs and it would continuously always return to the EX bucket at that point. Yeah, it would always be usable as a, a re- response to other action cards. Yeah, ish. Yeah. Maybe it. Maybe I don't know if ish is the right word because I think it's like not bad at all. But um, I don't think it's hmm. this and going. Oh my god, this is like a staple beast card or. Anything like that it's just it's okay i could see it getting used yes that's about the nicest i can be about it it's a very specific kind of card like you know how there's halt cards that you don't use in um in purple there's like specific halt cards that's like oh on death cause halt i feel like this is what that is for this new style of play deck that they want to go for green which is having a full board so this is one of those cards where it's like technically this helps this specific case but you also would not run it similar to how you don't run those cards that die when they die they give you hold like oh yeah no that card sucks yeah exactly so you need to have some cards like this so we'll see if i'm wrong and we'll there's i suddenly loyal to the cause is op and you have to nerf it but we'll see yeah somehow i doubt it but you never know now this card is hilarious it is unbreakable bond it copies it is a five cost it's an epic and it copies a friendly green unit it places it on the field yeah which is ridiculous that's so right stupid. This is like a... obviously this is only gonna i'm gonna say right now this is only gonna be actually useful to me in a full um the, i want to no, actually that's not true in a deck that is specific with, like, something like Yon Chun Li, can you cost... I was about I... to say Yon Li. That was yeah. all I can think. Yon... Is watching, like, an eight keep buffing itself through victories. And then you're like, okay, let's make another one. And with a five mana cost, you can use it when the opponent does something like an obliterate. Yeah. And then... I'll lose this one, but here's another one that now you have to fucking deal with. Yeah, and that becomes uh, that becomes a real hassle for sure. And uh, the funny thing is that it doesn't say, like, uh, it says copy. So I'm going to assume if you use someone like X, it, you copy an X that has all the abilities of the previous X. Yeah, it should be, at least to my understanding of reading it, it should be an exact replica of the one that's already on the field right now. Yeah. So I even if this card uh, doesn't seem uh, super top meta, I would totally love to use it because especially in Yon Chun Li, this sounds like the most hilarious card. Yeah, absolutely, it sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see how this one does, but I like it a whole bunch. Uh, next card we got Four Eyes. It is a purple unit. It is a four cost. It is a. Uh, Attack to HP 1, and when placed, if a friendly purple unit other than the self with an MP cost of 4 is present, seizes control of a random enemy unit with 4 HP or fewer. Um, so, I think when Abuki is dropped onto the field, how much HP does she... Um, how much... Uh, wait, no. No, it says MP cost of 4. No, no, never mind. 4 HP or fewer. Does Abuki start with four less than 4 HP? Uh, she starts with 4. So does uh, Senko. Okay. So, uh, we I was talking to someone with Warble in our special Teppin chat, and he said that Four Eyes could take um, Ibuki uh, if played correctly. And I said, um, there's the whole problem of if they have advantage. So if they, specifically, if they see that you're running another one of like these kind of four cost units, they're going to automatically know that you run Four Eyes. <laughs> And that you can steal and, their... Yeah, you're not going to drop an Ibuki. I mean, technically, yes. Four Eyes could steal Ibuki. Yeah. Drop a raw Ibuki with nothing to buffer with if you see enemies using this four mana. Yeah, at that, if, you're, if, thing. if you're playing that way, then you deserve to have your unit taken from you. Yeah, also, another friendly purple. Uh, board, depending yeah. on what you take. Yeah. I do think it's pretty good. That sure. You could take, like, you could weaken an Iris and then steal her and get all that mana ramp and stuff. Yeah. It's not, like, super crazy. No. I think Four Eyes is a pretty good, like, it's a very cheap cost, um, the seven legendary that uh, Purple has. 
uh, what is it called? Enroshed. Yes, exactly. It's a le- it's a weaker version of that, and um, as long as you're playing smart, the worst thing that could happen is that you misplay four eyes and you just drop a two one. And I think at that point you should just surrender the game because <laughs> if you waste four to drop a two one and don't steal anything, then I don't think there's a way for you to recover from that. Yeah, yeah. She her stats leave a lot to be desired for her mana cost. It and that. The, the Hail Mary stuff, like, I stole Ibuki or whatever, like, it's not gonna happen that often. No. If anything, this is all about board control. That's how I would use her. Yeah. And if you're playing against Morgan, you have to hope that they're gonna misplay. Yeah. Also, she's basically a because all of his revenge cards have more than four once their revenge pops, so. Yeah, yeah. But well, before the revenge, they're pretty easy to take. You just have to. Yeah, but then it. I don't think you would get the revenge, right? Wouldn't Wesker still get it? Wesker gets the revenge. Yeah, so there's no point. Like, who cares? Yeah. You stole a two three. I definitely would not run three four eyes. I would maybe at most maybe run one and hope one one or two, depending on what the other four costs we're gonna get for this specific engine gets to be. We'll see. Uh, next card from purple is. The new generation Reploids, It's uh, this is a one-cost MP, another one-cost for good old purple, because you know how much uh, they needed that. Um, it selects one card from hey, all I, the cards. I think they need it. Yeah. Selects one card from all the cards obtained with Explorer during the battle and puts it into the X pocket. Um, I think this is, it's random, but it does the one thing that purple wants, which is get more ability cards. Yeah, also, so, uh, it might be random, but it has a good chance of yanking Feng Shui engine, so... Yes, it does. So, there's definitely a whole bunch of uses for it. Um, it's also very silly. And I think it's a very silly card. It's similar to, like, Metronome, where you don't know what you're gonna get, but it, well, regardless of what you get, I think it'll be a pretty funny outcome, regardless. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I, I think it's good. Yeah. I like it. I don't know how much it's gonna get played, because purple kind of hurts for space in these kind of decks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the best thing, of course, about it is that it is literally just one cost. So yeah, that is good. Just play. Uh, next card from purple is another two cost pitfall trap. If your explore count is three or higher, inflict halt on the enemy for sixteen seconds. Which is fucking ludicrous. Sixteen seconds is so long. Yeah, that is literally higher than dark hold, which is third like older Anacharis before. I'm sure you have. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Uh. That's 13 seconds alt in the game if it can go off. Huh. So this is another card where I think it ends up being fine because you have to also be running a very specific type of like uh, you have to be using a purple that is also using explore. So let's assume that you're using um, a jury. That's one explore. I'm not sure what other explore. Oh, it's there's the one that creates unblockable. So it's definitely possible. But if you don't have three is a lot to get for specifically like yeah, is. that's this why this is one that i almost feel like uh you're gonna see in that four person like team up build more yeah. than anything else yeah definitely i think that makes a little bit more sense i think they explore a little bit more than them so we'll see i think obviously if there's a lot of it if there's th- if there's at least three explore cards that uh purple uses a whole bunch then this card is going to be nuts because 16 seconds is just too goddamn long. I don't, I don't think I, I see it getting used a bunch, but... We'll see. Uh, you're more of an expert on purple, of course. Uh, so I will always default to you. And now we will go to... What is it? Basil Geist? Ah, the Bagel Goose. Bagel Goose. He's everybody's, fa- he's everybody's favorite uh, Monster Hunter World monster. Because as soon as you start getting into the high rank stuff, he's one of those monsters that just shows up in the middle of a hunt that's not his hunt. Uh-huh. That's nice. <laughs> that sounds uh, He's good. everybody's favorite. He just shows up and kicks the shit out of you. Well, that's great because that's exactly what his card does. He is an 8-cost MP. He is an epic rare. His uh, attack is 3. His HP is 7. His effects are is that he has flight. And when he's placed on the field, if you explore count is 3 or higher, he automatically destroys a random MP cost 5 or less unit on the field. That's good. But like we talked about before, Black's uh, explore options are slim. Yes, that's the one thing. If this this one card might explain why Black's explore cards are so limited, because let me tell yeah. you right now, 
right now. If there is a cheap cost explore card for black, there is no stopping Ouroboros. Because Ouroboros will just constantly get back Basil guys, and he will automatically control the field. Yeah, because yeah, Basil Goose is pretty ridiculous. Um, if if the Explorer gets off, he's pretty yes, ridiculous. Yes, obviously, anyway. if he's an Explorer. If you don't have the Explorer, then obviously Devolo is better than him in every single way. Because that's uh, Devolo wins games. Basil Juice controls the field. There's a difference. Yeah, basically, yeah. And uh, of course, if you um, draw. Um, if you draw Devolo, then you can wait the eight and then just play it, and then they have to deal with you. If you draw Basil Geist and you have no Explorer, there's really no helping you on this one because he's kind of dead in your hand until you get your Explore car cost off. So we'll see. Well, again, I need to see what the actual Explore options for Black are, but this might be one of the reasons why some of the Explore options for Black are limited. Yeah, limited on, on a good day. Yeah. But I, he's... Like, is that mana cost is through the roof. Yes. That's why he, um, o- he only runs in uh, Ouroboros. He does not run in any other kind of deck. Yeah, but I just, I don't think you can run that many. Because if you do, you're going to be in a situation where you could easily get a really clogged up hand. Yeah. That's what but I'm saying. If, if you're running, um, you cannot run him and Devolo in the same deck, is my current like thought process because he requires you to be so much into explore and if you're not it, like you can't half ass it you can't run half explore and then one devil o and then one basil guys because that's not going to work out for you at all that's just like you're at that point there's too many things in the actual ingredients of the deck and you're never going to get any of it off i can see that yeah so again fun card let's see if uh we'll see what the rest of black has to offer if <laughs> if he ever gets the shine uh, I think he's funny, though. He's very good. Uh, next card we got is Jetta, the High Noble. He is a legendary MP cost 7, a 3-6, and victory, he gets to explore Salvation of Souls. And Salvation of Souls is a 1 cost. You select one friendly unit, and then all units other than the selected unit become 2-2. Two, two. Uh, for each unit change, the selected unit gets plus 1, plus 1. And the important thing to realize about this card is that it does not say only your units. Yeah. All units on the field become a 2-2. Yeah, which is really good against, like, buff-heavy decks. Yeah. Uh, the only, the big problem with him is that he is, oh, he does not have flight. I take that back. I thought he had flight. I thought Jetta had flight. Isn't he, like, a vampire man? can fly if that's what you mean but the card does not have flight okay that makes him slightly better then okay so you have to win with jetta at least one time in order to um uh i get uh salvation of souls and the obvious thing for anyone is that um the second this dude shows up on the field they're gonna do everything in their power to one find a way to kill him at the exact same time as their unit or automatically destroy him with a um black card of some kind like, that's the only yeah, real... Yeah, And the only other deck that I could ever see him, like... And there's only one co- one one of him. So if you waste him, if you're running a... Specifically a Rest, uh, Wesker or a Nergigante deck, and you're not running Ouroboros, and if you waste him, he's gone forever. You're never going to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you have to be... I think this is another case of, like, um, an Ouroboros deck that's specific to him. It's similar. It's funny because I think there's specific um, Ouroboros decks. The obviously the most popular one is Devolo because Devolo is the I would say the best one. The only thing that counters Devolo is um, if you're running into a Wesker with Ouroboros and he's running Bison instead of Ouroboros, you lose because they get too much card advantage at that point. But uh, Bison specifically is worse in every other matchup uh, that De- <laughs> besides Devolo. The only one he has advantage on is Devolo. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah pretty much i i think jetta is pretty uh fun i'll see i this is another card where i just kind of mess want to see mess with him because salvation of souls is so hilariously funny that i want to try it out and unfortunately there's no um there's no black card that's similar to the red card that says automatically get something that explores you know the whatever if there's an explore card on the phone oh, yeah uh, pull the yeah yeah there's nothing like that for black yet as far as i know so we'll have to wait and see for him. Uh, and finally, the last card of the entire set for previews is Nikolai Genova. 
Geneva? Genevieve? Uh, sure. Let's go with that. He's a four cost common two nine, and when placed, send a random card from your hand or EX pocket to the graveyard. Um, there's exp- there is exactly one deck that I can see this guy being run on, and it is a meme Wesker deck that is Ouroboros that runs um, high cost other level arts. So specifically, like, so this is something I've run into, and I've only run into it once because it was during free play because it's not viable at all. But if you run Wesker um, hybrid and you put an extremely high cost monster from the other color and then you send it to your graveyard, you can get it back with Ouroboros. The problem is, is that once it's in your hand, you can't play it. So it becomes a dead card. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. So for the longest time, I was like, I wish Black had a way to get a card out of your hand. And now there is. The problem is, is that he's random. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, not ideal. No. So, I don't think this guy like, is... Like, draw phases where you can choose to, like, limit what's in your hand. You're just kind of... Yeah. I wish his effect was more like, remove, uh, send a card that is, like, furthest to the right to the graveyard. Uh, or furthest to the left, because then you could control it. I was going to say, if it was furthest to the right, then they would always take from the EX pocket, and you don't want that. Uh, but there's right. ways for, obviously, for you to control what card is sent, but they decided to make it random, so... Uh, at, at that co- at that point, he is a four cost two nine, and he is nowhere as good as the other four costs because there you have at that point you have Wheel Gator who is a two ten at four cost. So I don't see running him at all unless you're like me and you want to run a very stupid meme deck. But that's really the only <laughs> the only reason you have him. Nothing wrong with meme decks, all right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Now, of course, if um, uh, eventually Black turns into the Dark World deck where if you discard cards from your hand, they get stronger. Maybe we'll be in a different conversation, but until then, uh, that's a current no from me, dog, on this card. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. All right, and that is now officially <laughs> every single card in preview three. Uh, who do you think? Who is your favorite of uh, the the of the three ones we've seen? Uh, preview three didn't necessarily wow me. Um. Nostra, because I think he's going to be a really funny meme. Um, mm-hmm. the, the I, I like the green card that makes the fucking copies, because that's dumb. Yeah, Unbreakable Bond, I think we're both in agreement that I think yeah. Unbreakable Bond is very funny. And then I like Bagel Goose, because it's just, just because of who it is from Monster Hunter. That's why I like it. Yeah. I'll say for me, it's uh, it's Jetta, Basil Goose, and Unbreakable Bond, and it's they're all kind of in the same kind of theory of like I just want to mess around with these dudes and see if I can do something. Yeah, nobody quite like Jury that just blew me away. Yeah, but um, and specifically for Black, I'm still feeling in the same place I was previously, where I feel like. Uh, and this, a lot of this is probably coming from the fact that so many people thought Black would, this was going to be the, um, expansion that would make Black insanely good. And I think it's really more, it's really been more for purple and other colors and less for Black. I feel like Black has had to take a lot of good cards that all all come with, like, stipulations on them because Black is already so strong. Yeah, Black's already ridiculous. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Yeah, my only bummer is that there's no uh, black cards that actually uh, perm- like enter the new meta, but we'll see because there's more cards to be revealed eventually. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. And with that, that is every single card preview. We did it, Zen. We we made it. We made it through. Yeah, and we did it just in time before. Good luck to everybody in the Grand Prix, by the way. Yes, play Finals. the Grand Prix. I think when this time, by the time this releases, it will be the final day of the Grand Prix. So if you need to hurry the hell on up there, uh, yeah, do please hurry up. Yes, but uh, otherwise, hey, guys in the finals. If you're already in the finals, yeah, I'll see you guys in the finals. Hopefully, I make it. We'll see. I'm sure you'll make it. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, actually, I take that back. I'm using Wesker, so Wesker's pretty good. So <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I feel the same way about Morgan. <laughs> that's fair. All right, everyone, we'll see you in the next uh, thing we decide to do together, whatever that might be. (laughs) Whatever it is. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.